Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be looking at an, an application called Mailspring. Now, normally I probably wouldn't look at this ma this application on the channel because prior to now, it wasn't actually completely open source. It was just mostly open source. There's some proprietary bits in there. And I usually try to focus solely on FOSS, FOSS stuff here on my channel. But recently, the developer of Mailspring has taken the app completely GPL, so which is great. I love when programs that were previously proprietary or partially proprietary in this case go open source, and it's something that I you know would like to you know cheer about whenever it happens. So rah rah, <laughs> as about as much cheering as you're gonna get out of me. Uh, but anyways, what is Mailspring? Mailspring basically is just a mail client, so it has some quirks and stuff that you have to get used to and the biggest one being that it requires a Mailspring account so uh, if that's going to turn you away you probably can just stop watching because it requires it you cannot actually access a email account in Mailspring without a Mailspring account so they do require you to have that and that's kind of annoying uh, but if that's the, uh, really annoying why would you use it and the, the answer to that is that is very very well designed so it, it actually looks like a piece of Apple software is the way I would put it let's actually just go ahead and look at what this what this is so this right here is Mailspring now this isn't the way it comes out of the box it has some themes which I'll show you in a minute but basically this is just a well designed piece of software and it's very functional so you know if it has inline replies so if I wonder I mean this is just a YouTube you know, email or whatever, but I could, you know, just inline reply here. So it also has cool things like read receipts. So when you send an email and the person who received your email reads it, you'll get a little notification saying, hey, so-and-so read your email. That's cool. It has the same thing for link tracking. So basically, if you send them a link and they click on the, the link, you'll know that they've clicked on the link. So basically, this is a great way to have your colleagues to, or to monitor your colleagues or your employees knowing that... <laughs> That they're actually reading and interacting with your email. It's a little creepy, but it's cool. You can, I believe, disable that if you're not interested in spying on people you send emails to. There's also built in integration for Google and IMAP and all the stuff that you'd expect uh, for an email client, which is, you know, it's just standard. If it didn't have it, then we, it'd be more notable. Beyond the design, it does have a ton of different preferences that you can change. And it's very, you know, it's very Apple-like in its design in terms of settings and stuff too. Because it has a tons of stuff that you can just little, just little tweaks and stuff. You, you can change the, you know, the appearance and do a whole bunch of stuff with the keyboard shortcuts, which is really cool. You can create mail rules and folders and signatures and so on. Just the normal stuff you do with an email client. Now, I did mention another annoying thing. You can only have four email addresses associated with your Mailspring account if you don't pay. Now, I don't mind a developer making money. I don't like subscription services. I just want to be able to pay you for your, you know, your application. Let me pay, you know, 50 bucks. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, choose a number. It doesn't matter. But for, in, in this case, I right, get to go with the right thing, $8 a month. Now, I mean, that's not a, a big thing. I mean, people will spend that much money on coffee or whatever. But it's annoying. I don't want to have to pay $8 a month for my email client. I just don't. So that that's probably the most... That's probably the thing that would keep me from using this full-time is that I have more than four email things and I don't really want to pay $8 a month. Now, if I, like I said, charge me... give Allow me to, you know, do a lifetime payment. I want to buy this thing for a lifetime. I don't, I, even if it's like a hundred bucks, I would probably do it, you know, because it's good. Um, I think this is probably the most well-designed email client for Linux. You can do a lot of stuff with like Thunderbird and stuff to make it look good, but otherwise it's very complicated and kludgy. Uh, Geary is very much integrated with the GNOME aesthetic, so you can do a lot of theming and stuff like that, but it looks like it belongs in GNOME. Evolution, kind of the same way with with uh, GNOME, with Geary. It looks like it belongs in a GTK application. This looks like it belongs in a Macintosh. <laughs> so that may be a good or good bad thing for you because if you, the rest of your system doesn't look like it's you know 
belongs on a Mac, uh, then, you know, this would kind of stand out. But otherwise, you know, it, I just really like the look of it. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, website here. The, the website is fairly basic, allows you to download and stuff and shows you the pro feature. So if you pay $8 a month, you get template support, rich contact profiles, uh, follow up reminders, read receipts, which I thought you got that in the free version. Maybe that maybe you used to give it, get it in the free version. Hmm. Maybe they changed that. I don't know. Delayed send, company overviews, snooze messages, and and more. You can also somewhere it says that you can go through and I think it's actually in here. You're using Mailspring Basic, which is free. You can link up to four email accounts. Yeah. So that means in order to get more than four, you have to subscribe, which is fine. Like I said, I, it, per, subscription plans are just a personal peeve to me because there's just so many of them. Like I'm going to pay for Netflix, D Disney Plus, you know, whatever. There's just so many things. And then by the time you're done with them, you're spending, you know, $200 a month on subscription services and, and rant. Anyways, <laughs> it's a really nice website. You can also see the code and stuff right here on GitHub, which I'll also link in the video description. Uh, so if you're into, into auditing code, then you'll will notice that this is a fork of Nihilus Mail. I actually don't think Nihilus is still being developed, and it is not. It hasn't been updated in three years. So it is a fork of that. It's by one of the original authors of Nihilus, so they kind of have the same vision for what Nihilus was. So if you used Nihilus in the past, it's kind of the same thing, only this is now completely open source. And this, I know it's completely open source because they did a blog post on it, which I will also link. Today I'm excited to announce that I'm open sourcing MailSync and C++11 core of MailSpring that performs email sync under the same GPL v3 license used by the rest of that, making MailSpring entirely open source. That's just great news. Um, so really, that's all I really wanted to talk about for this. The MailSpring, you can download it from GitHub, you can download it from you know Snap. You, it's in the AUR, obviously, because everything's in the AUR. I mean, come on, people. The AUR is awesome. So I, I would just say, give this a download. If you're looking for an email client that's not Thunderbird, this is a very good option. And it's pretty. Like I said, it has some annoying things. Like, I do not care for the fact that you have to sign up for it. Uh, even if you give the free version, you still have to give them an account. That's annoying. It would be different. Okay, so let, let me just put this. It would be different if by signing up for that account, it remembered your account details and stuff. So you sign into to MailSpring and remembered all the accounts you've signed into under that, like all your Gmail stuff, and just inputted it and bam, you're out of the gate. So you only have to sign in one time. It doesn't do that. It just requires you to sign in. And then you still have to sign into your email accounts uh, every time you, you know, reinstall MailSpring. And that's, it makes me ponder <laughs> why they need uh, my email address or ha they require me to have an account, right? So what are they doing with that information? It's a little, it worries me a bit. I don't really care. I don't really mind having an account, but I want to have some functionality, some kind of return, you know, for them having my email address. I want a return for that, like syncing my accounts or something. I don't know. Literally anything. <laughs> some kind of benefit for them having forced me to create an account, which is, as of right now, there's no benefit for me that I've had to create an account through MailSpring. It's just the way it is. All right. So that is it for this video. Real quick, uh, you can, uh, if you would like to uh, support the channel, you can do so by subscribing and hit the notification icon. We're looking for getting, we're looking towards getting a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. We're like a quarter of the way there. <laughs> it's insane. People are subscribing to this nonsense. I don't even, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, really, I do appreciate it, but like I, it, you, you're supposed to make YouTube content that you'd subscribe to, and sometimes I just feel like these videos are terrible. Uh, so, anyways, thanks for everybody who subscribed. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. You can also support us on the Patreon at patreoncom linuxcast Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and all that nonsense. You can also give us a like. If you don't feel like subscribing, just leave a like. Seriously, or a dislike. I don't care. Uh, that's probably what I'll do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.